helpful tip for you guys right off the bat here. Go ahead and smash that like button. Electronics cleaning, vinegar, that is the key. A little bit of vinegar in a mixture that will take the water spots right off. All right, we're gonna be using the electronics today, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little pre-wipe. And I don't think we're gonna be dealing with a lot of waves and splashing today, so it'll keep the screens nice and clean. Welcome all back to the channel, y'all. Today, we're going to be addressing brush piles, how to find them with the electronics and, and how to approach them. The reason I wanna focus on brush piles today is because this is the time of year where brush piles become very good. A lot of fish move towards brush piles. But when I was first getting into fishing and, and I got a boat and I would hear about people catching fish out of brush piles, it was very intimidating. You know, first of all, how do, how do you find a brush pile? And then how do, you, how do you really fish it? So now that I have some years of knowledge, I just wanna show you guys how I look for brush piles and uh, some ways that you can fish them for bass and crappie. And we've got to try out the new Doppler, man. The new live scope turret. So we're gonna take this off of our trolling motor right now. We're gonna place it on the turret and we're going to put this to use out on the lake. So what I wanna look at today and show you guys is where do you even look for a brush pile? I haven't planted a brush pile in years. There's so many people that do plant them. Oop, just, just saw one right here. Just saw one on the, uh, on the down scan. There's one little pile right there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna mark that. Just a little thing, just a little thing. Okay, mark it with that symbol, the tree, and we keep going. And sometimes they are random, but really what you wanna look for is what is your lake's good offshore depth? That's one of the first things you need to figure out. Where do you see a lot of the bait? And how deep is the lake? You know, a lot of our lakes here in Texas reservoirs they're like 50 60 foot deep some get out to like 80 90 100 feet and really clear deep water those were those are like very clear deep water lakes here for texas but most of the time they're going to be around 60 feet and that good depth to look for is going to be anywhere from about 15 out to 25 and that's where i see a lot of the bait fish moving in the summertime and look for the little irregularities on offshore points. So when you look at a map, you want to look for the little little nodes that are coming off of points. Sometimes they're they're right on the big main lake point, and then sometimes the the guys that are smart that plant brush piles they'll put them just off to the side of the juice. And in today's day and age the obvious stuff gets hit so hard and fish will move off to the sides of the juice and feed because they're so used to getting hit right on top of the, the best looking stuff. If you don't have side scan, that is the biggest game changer in finding brush piles. You can use 2D. I used to find them with 2D. It just takes a lot more time to idle over those spots and you just kind of zigzag back and forth. But when you have side scan, I've got mine set on 110, 120 feet, and I'll look for the things that are casting shadows. I'm not necessarily looking for fish, because a lot of times you can be fooled with um, carp and catfish and other species, and you can utilize one of these babies. Now, I don't use these anymore because I've got spot lock and all the you know latest and greatest in electronics. But if you don't have live scope and all that you can use this and this is a marker buoy it will um, basically show you line you up keep you lined up where to cast so once you find that brush throw this out and then you can keep in that position with the trolling motor you don't have to throw this on top of the brush you can throw it off to the side or where you want your boat positioned and keep casting in that spot so it's just a it's a way to keep reference on your spot what we're going to be utilizing today is the new live turret, which is awesome. 
because I, I can just spot lock and I can zone in and it's game over. But right now I'm on a huge, huge offshore point. This thing comes out, it's hundreds of yards long and I'm going in the little areas between 15 and 25 and I'm looking with the side scan for any irregularities. So I'm looking for those brush piles that somebody that was sneaky is gonna put out here and that's gonna hold fish on this huge flat. There's no timber out here. There's some rock cover that holds some fish, but if you find a brush pile that is amongst a lot of nothing, you're usually gonna find fish on it. It's just a great attractor. So I'm running Garmin's here, y'all, but the color palette that I love to use is this lime green, this kind of crazy green. It just really stands out to my eye. Everybody has their preferences on color palettes, but right now I'm in 20 foot. That's a good depth because I can see them off a little deeper, or if there's something up shallow, I can see that. Now, coming up right here, this is an old foundation. I have never fished this in my life. It looks like there is something else right here too, maybe another foundation. I'm basically going right over here. If we look right here on our down scan, I can see some fish that are on that foundation. So we're actually gonna fish that right here. All right, we're just gonna pick up a spoon and toss it out here. It's a good thing to note the general depth of activity. This looks like about 22 to 24. I'm gonna keep that in mind. And this, uh, this foresight turret is much faster. I just got hit. It's much faster than my other one. Picked up first cast. We got here a little white bass. Chill, homie. First cast. Got a fish. It's never terrible. So I'm locked in position here. I'm I'm on the apex of a point, and I haven't even pulled up to the structure that I found. It looked like there was some foundation, and then off from that, someone had planted some brush. So we're gonna search for that here in a minute. I'm just gonna try to pick these fish off. Might be, might be a bass or two roaming around here as well. Another little buddy. He's not gonna come off on his own. So we got some general feeding activity on this point. That's good. Okay, it looks like I just spotted, just spotted the edge of, looks like some brush possibly. I usually will keep my settings around 75. If I'm really looking, I'll go to 100. I just saw a bass. There's a bass coming out. We're getting a little too close for comfort for him. All right, I'm seeing it, just a ball of fish right there that's not moving. That's telling me it's most likely crappie. We've got some bait fish above them, which is perfect. So I'm gonna switch to a crappie jig and realign myself here. Come on, eat it. Eat that thing. There we go. We got a crappie that swam out from the pile. Came way off to grab that snacky. There we go, nice little crappie. Let him go. I'm a little far right now, I'm about 40 feet away, 35, 40 feet. Typically when I'm crappie fishing, I like to get about 20 to 15. But I just wanted to see if I might get one of those sneaky little bass. Okay, something else I'm also gonna do is go ahead and rig up a Mondo worm. So it looks like there's a bigger mark in there. Could be a bass. So I'm gonna 
go with red bug mondo i remember to pack some mondo worms but as you can tell i'm running low guggensquad.com use code lfg and save on your mondo worms and other summertime wigglies and jigglies Mondo worm is a uh, central summertime worm. All right, there we go. And you can see the bass sitting on top. Just, just waiting for a big worm, come on. Now typically, when I'm working a brush pile for bass, I am not gonna wait too long for that fish to, to bite. And I'm not necessarily just watching the scope the whole time. I'm looking for the brush pile to kind of angle up my cast. I like to stay, you know, 40 feet plus away from it. Work that worm through there. The worm is so great on the Texas rig because it gets through all that stuff. If you're fishing something like a Carolina rig or a crankbait, crankbaits can be good and it's nice with live scope. You can see your crankbait coming through there, but you do tend to get hung a lot. So brush pile fishing a worm Texas rig worm is really your best friend. I can't get those bass to bite. Now crappie, I approach a little differently and I will spend a little time on them. With a bass, it's usually reactionary for me. I don't, I don't sit and plug away. I might come back to the pile and try to fish it later if the fish isn't firing, if the bass aren't firing on it, but I, I typically do not spend too many casts on the bass if they're not firing away. And what I've been seeing lately like this past year see that bass swimming away right there it's like if you if you go into crappie mode on these piles you you'll often see the bass swim away it's like they notice the electronics and they start swimming off so you definitely want to stay farther away so whether you're using live scope or whether you're using you know 2d side scan marker point put your uh put your your buoy out you want to stay a pretty good distance away basically as far as you can cast i've never uh never fished this spot before so i'm interested to see if we can catch any decent crappie off of it switch up to a dart this is my favorite summertime when it starts getting sticky they want that direct vertical presentation love this and right when they start getting on the brush piles the crappie they really like that swing in presentation i'm throwing well past the brush pile i'm swinging it in and that little snacky swimmer is, is great for that there we go just floated that one real slow over the over the heads there's a decent keeper crappie I'm leaving for a trip in the morning. Go up to flares, so I'm not gonna keep any today. But this is a good, this is a good little, little warm up right here for when I get back. Go full blown, fill the cooler crappie mode. There's another one coming. Got him. There we go. That one looks a little better. Oh yeah, he's pulling. That's a good crappie right there. It's a big one. Look at this slab, y'all. It's even better when you find a new one and catch catch one that size. That feels like a crime putting that one back. Look at that. Tiny little hole in its mouth. That's why you gotta use a light rod. Nice keeper crappie better than nice it's excellent those are fun to catch that size all right something i'm gonna do here on my live scope is i'm going to adjust it face more down i'm gonna, I'm gonna go one notch down because i've kind of had it set on spring live scoping early summer at this point i'm i'm getting more into getting close to the brush piles for crappie. I want to be able to see uh, 
see basically more straight down rather than out ahead. I had it out ahead before because you can actually see your lure at the surface. So the way I had it adjusted, I could see I could see fishing a top water. I could really get those jerk bite jerk bait follows, get a great read on them. But now fishing deeper, I'm gonna adjust it a notch down. And I can already tell it's I can see a lot better with it. Golly, that was a donk. I mean a donk. Crappy donk. That's that's nice and okay. Definitely going to, so another thing that I like to do when I find a spot, get a general area with this, the side scan, but I will get right on top, as I'm leaving the area, I'm done fishing it, I'm gonna get right on top of it with the nose of my trolling motor, and then I'll remark it. It's one thing I love about the Garmin's. Crap. Crap E. And there's another spot, oh my gosh, just ahead of me here. I'm gonna spot like that because it looks like some juicies. Whoo, darling. See if I can dang dangle a couple of these schnickerdoodles up here. That's gotta happen. I mean, oh my gosh, smoked it. Yeah, these are toads. These are toad crappies. Oh yeah, baby. I'm telling you, this is like the size down there. That's the size. What a fish. They're a little trickier. These bigger ones, I really had to float that one on top. But, gosh, I'll let you go. Let you go. That hurts. That hurts letting that fish go. But sometimes those bigger ones, you just have to, you just have to hover it above them. The dangle darts just irresistible. You just got to put it right in the spot. And I'm ten feet away, with my pole, just holding it over. And this little pile is. Um, it's not very big, y'all. This this pile is probably the size of uh, a bike. It's the size of a bicycle. And there's probably eight to ten fish on it, but they're just big. They're just bigger fish. So, let's see if we can get another one here. All right, this should be it, ladies and gentlemen. Jig entering perfect trajectory i'm just going to try to float it right above those parts there we go oh my gosh big and big crappie just came off right there this is where the turret is the program i got a light wind my spot lock is keeping me in place but i don't have to move the turret or move the trolling motor with my feet which allows me to put all my focus oh there's a good one coming up to tag it oh my gosh that actually could have been a white bass he was coming way out for it but i can put all of my focus oh gosh the drag got walloped there's a good one. big end i can put all my focus in in trying to present my lure the right way and that's what it takes right now on this particular spot. Oh man, you had a hard spawn, dude. Half your tail's missing. All right, I'll let you go hang out with your big buddies down there. And we'll go try to find another pile. Maybe try to get a bass off one. Pause for a jet skier run through right here. Probably here in the background. Every time a jet ski or boat comes through, get a little caddy wampus. But here's what I will say about live scope because live scope gets a lot of and I am I am one of those that has uh, often played devil's advocate about it 
because it is transforming fishing the way that we fish but here's what I'll say and anyone that has been on live scope for a while will, will recognize this you have to be dialed on your casting so if any if anyone talks smack about a uh, live scope and has never used it I want you to understand for casting you have to be precise there is a beam that is like that wide I don't really know how wide it is but I know it's, it's probably close to about that that you have to cast in to be able to line up and follow your lure on live scope or follow the fish or whatever so you have to be precise with the live scope in order for it to be effective a bass lure shows up pretty well a crappie jig is pretty difficult especially when you start pitching it out 20 30 feet you'll notice it gets hard to track if you get live scope you have to really practice with it and you have to be in tune with it just it doesn't mean you're going to start catching fish now once you get dialed with it it is a uh, it is a force to be reckoned with and then i will say it, it will affect fisheries and it does affect fisheries and there's no putting that genie back in the bottle folks i'm finding these piles using the the uh, side scan but to really step it up and get precise with these crappie i don't know if you just saw that but had to i, I made multiple casts 10 15 casts where it was just a little bit off few inches off in order to get those bigger crappie you have to get it right on their nose like they do not want to move and by the way that's i say this a lot but that's one of the ways that you tell that fish are crappie because white bass are moving all the time. You'll see catfish kind of moving around. Bass on a brush pile, you'll see them kind of circle around. They kind of hunt it, but a crappie just sits in it and they don't move. And that, that makes them easy targets with live scope, kind of, uh, but you still gotta hit them right on the nose if, if they're smart and pressured. So I just wanted to say that, just put that out there because just because you have live scope doesn't mean that you're gonna start catching fish. Another area that you really want to look at if you have this on your lake is, is docks. People love to plant brush piles under their docks and also fishermen love to plant brush piles out away from the docks. There's a lot of lakes I've been to where you're fishing the dock, you know, you're flipping the dock and then you, you look at your electronics right below the boat, just 2D, you, you look at it and you're sitting right on top of a brush pile. You're sitting right where the fish, the bigger fish are and so Get on your side scan, idle out in front of those docks and you'll probably find some sneaky ones that are away from it, that are just less obvious. When you start idling around in this deeper water in the summertime, you get in that zone where the fish like to hang, you will see fish everywhere. Not necessarily bass, but you are going to see all sorts of species and it's really confusing and it can it can put you off track. It's just so hard to know that they're bass or not. So you can get on a wild goose chase, chasing around fish that look like bass. But I guess the best advice to that is if it's something that looks like good cover, flows a hard bottom, bass love hard bottoms. A lot of predatory fish love hard bottoms. Then you're most likely gonna have a few bass in there. But if it's just like silty sand areas that you're going around, but there's a, there's a drop, then it's probably catfish and carp and drum and all of that stuff. I just went over this with down scan. Right there. Obvious tree. Looks, looks like we got fish in it, so we'll give it a shot. Now, I want you to just look at this son of a D coming right between me and another boat that's fishing over here. What a chodberry. The pleasure bees are coming out. Oh yeah, big old, big old over the bows. Come on. All right, broke up guys. On a worm finally. Oh my 
God, he got off. Son of a biscuits. Did not get the best long range hook set on that. Caught me off guard. I had to run to the back of the boat because I had so much stretch in my line. There's just a little bit of brush on a point. And as soon as I started coming into the little brushy spot, I got bit. And it's not a it's not a real tall brush pile, it's kind of more laid over. Okay, we got one more spot I want to show you guys, and it's brush that I have fished before. And it just looks different. So I want to show you what it looks like on the electronics. What to look for here. This is 2D, old school standard. That's what brush looks like. And when you're sitting over the top of it, not moving very much, you're gonna see the lines get flatter. And if you're moving over it, it's going to obviously make an arc. But that's what the brush looks like. You can see the lines going up. Those are the different branches. It kind of tapers off. It looks like there's some bait in here. A couple of individual fish that you can see. And then this is the down scan. So you can see the tall brush see a couple of fish in the top not not a whole lot going on but I wanted to show it to you guys so now with the scope you can really see it open up like there is that Christmas tree we were looking at you can see just a couple of fish in top it's mostly like bluegill back behind it there's just a series of those trees that are just bunched together studying that brush is kind of important because it will help you understand how to fish it. You know, there's very snaggy, tangly brush like cedar trees that will just catch your lures and there's not much you can fish in it, you know, bass wise, except a, a soft plastic Texas rig. You don't want to have your hook exposed. But other brush like PVC and things like that, you can fish open hook lures through it just fine. And so it really does help to, to understand what kind of tree it is, what kind of brush it is, and how aggressively you can fish it. Last spot, guys. One more little section. There's a drop-off that's got a couple of different brush piles on it. There are some crappie here. It looks like there's a few bass here. And I'm going to position my boat off the ledge, throw up behind the brush, and bring it through with the worm. If we don't get any uh, bass, then I'll switch to the crappie jig. But I'm going to just stay backed out first about 60 70 feet cast up there bring it through and see if we can get a big old mondo these shad look like they've been pilfered a little bit which is great look there's a bass bass chasing the shad right now kind of busting them up going through there this would actually be a good call for a crankbait and bringing it through the jam session and it's not getting the bass not getting the bass to go Back right here got something oh yeah we're hooked up on a good one. oh yeah oh my god it came off Dear Lord, that felt like a big old bass. I don't have my, uh, I don't have the trebles, the barbs on the trebles here. Oh my God, smoked it. It's probably gonna be a crappie, it hit it so hard. Oh, it's, oh yeah, it's a giant crappie. There we go, fellas. Just hit it so hard. Caught it. We caught it. We're gonna lose that spoon, dead gummit. Oh, we got it out. And when you snag up and brush, if you pull into it real hard, obviously it's gonna go into the brush. It would go into my finger right here. But if you get over top of the bait and you just shake it like that a lot of times it will just come out the the weight of the lure itself will get it to come out back at the treehouse everybody got to give you a chicken check 
got to do it because these little chicks, they're growing by the second. There they are. They were hiding in the woods. They have been demolishing bugs. So good for the yard. It's nice to see my little, my little exterminators out there doing their work. Now they go in a few times a day to chow down on the feed, but you know, honestly, they prefer to be outside and just scratch around and find bugs. It's nature's way. And the rest of the flock gets along with them beautifully. There's, there's no discrepancies just yet. When they start getting a little older, maybe they'll start picking at them when they get in that pecking order phase, but right now we're Gucci. And let's talk about the turret, y'all. The, uh, the new Doppler. Um, love how quiet it is, very quick need to move this out a little bit so it will basically not make contact with the shaft of my trolling motor and be able to almost go 360 essentially so thank you guys for tuning in to today's somewhat educational video stay tuned for more outdoor adventures right here you know what to do i'll see you on the next one